AI is destroying jobs all around. This is the common fear and hype that we see in media every single day. But in a very curious turn of events, if you are a domain expert, a doctor, lawyer, engineer, scientist, public policy maker, and not an AI expert, the AI companies have a great need for your domain expertise. Isn't that an amazing news? You can actually monetize your domain expertise in absolutely new ways. Welcome to Billion Homes. This is Sandeep Manudhane, Mentor Sandy, bringing you AI for Real Impact. Let's dive into this golden opportunity and find what it has to offer us being a non-AI person even. Doctors, lawyers, scientists, engineers, any domain expert, AI actually needs you all. And how come this amazing turn of events has come about? Before we go into it, I recommend that you take a subscription for our free newsletter, AI for Everyone. This wonderful wisdom packed newsletter reaches your inbox every Tuesday and Friday. Go ahead and subscribe. The link is given in the comments. When AI actually came about in the modern form, these AI models needed data labelers. AI is nothing but data. Data goes in, inference comes out. Inference is what you ask and what it does and gives you on your mobile handset immediately. Once you have to ingest a lot of data into models, someone has to label that data for the AI model to make sense of it. These people are called data labelers. So today when you use ChatGPT or Gemini or Grok or Claude or DeepSeek, there is an army of hundreds of thousands of normal human beings who have been paid rather low wages, who have done grunt work of 8 to 10 hours every day, painstakingly labeling data in the form of text, images, video, some slices of videos, code, etc. Literally hundreds of thousands of people across the world who are called data annotators or data labelers. There are uh, aggregators, there are portals that actually dish out such jobs at very low rates and people do it. All the modern AI in its foundation has data labeling. This was all perfectly fine when the models were rather raw, rudimentary, not as polished as they have started getting now. The moment the LLMs, large language models, the chatbots, the AI, as we know it, most of us, consumers, the moment they became more sophisticated, they started handling deeper issues. Suddenly, the model started collapsing in the edge cases where a complicated medical query would come up or a complicated legal or judicial query would come about. So it would suddenly hallucinate to a greater extent than otherwise because the relevant data wasn't annotated with the expertise it required. Similarly for science, similarly for engineering domains, etc. So as many domains that you can think of where expertise is gained over decades of backbreaking labor, those were the areas where the general AI models could not really do well. And that is where the game started to change. So as I said, AI, started by annotating of raw data. Literally millions and millions of pieces of data needed to be manually annotated by some human being somewhere. And these were all very low paying jobs. And it was actually assumed that once all this annotation is done, whether it is text or audio or video or images, as I have always shared that Fai Fai Lee, the godmother of AI, she created 22,000 categories of images and millions of images which volunteers actually went about labeling by hand and that's how the whole ImageNet project came up and computer started seeing in the truest sense of the word computer vision and then AlexNet and all and the rest is history. The same applies for all other domains other than images and this is how it was assumed that once all this labeling has been done, you don't need any more labeling. But then nature had other plans. Any complicated technical query pertaining to law or medicine or any field of science or engineering, these LLM just couldn't handle because that level of data annotation expertise had actually never been used. And so this all matters because why does data labeling matter? It enables supervised learning, model accuracy goes up, real world complexity and reducing of bias. So far, so good. But as I said, 
the early phase of AI development, it was all about volume over depth. You needed more and more of data and not too much worried about the depth because it was the launch phase. November 22, we had ChatGPT, but over the next three years, what happened is that as billions of humans started using it, imagine the edge cases, the very specific queries piled up and LLM started cracking there. This is why the original volume over depth labeling has slowly morphed into domain expertise labeling. And why exactly? As I explained, this is a wonderful topic. This topic is wonderful because it tells you that there are opportunities, even if you're not into AI, you are a full-time practicing medical professional. If you can spare an hour per day, you might actually monetize your skills better. And that is true for every domain expert. So the next time someone tells you that AI is destroying jobs, there are two answers to that allegation. First, AI is transforming tasks that make up a job. Some tasks will go, some new tasks will come up, some tasks will be transformed. The jobs will remain largely. And secondly, for domain experts who otherwise have nothing to do with AI, totally new opportunities have come up. So I think we should really praise the specific new opportunities that are coming up so that more people can explore and perhaps even earn better. So the reason this shift happened Complexity and nuance, they demand expertise. It cannot be done by a regular person who doesn't belong to the field. So if I'm not a cardiologist, but if I'm a technologist, I cannot really annotate or label data pertaining to serious heart data, heart-related data, surgery-related data. I can't do it. I'll need a specific cardiologist to do it or someone with a heart expertise. Model capabilities grew. So people's expectations also grew. Nuance reasoning is needed, especially chain of thought reasoning or etc. Contextual judgment became important. So there used to be a thing called prompt engineering. Now we have more of context engineering and larger context windows came into being. So with every passing week, people's expectations from AI kept rising. So if the raw material, the basic data which is fed into it, if that annotation is not keeping pace, everything will simply fall apart. And this is why these companies went after domain experts. And then came the huge opportunity as I see here. <clears throat> I invite you to check out our beautiful courses. If you're an absolute beginner in AI, I have wonderful courses like AI like IM10, Generative AI and AI Technicals like IM10. And if you're an expert or a professional, AI Force Multiply Plus is a great course for all corporate professionals. And CXO AI Mentoring is a one-to-one -one program we have for CXOs. Go ahead and make the most of it. All the links are there in the comment. Thank you so much. So whether you are in a healthcare and clinical reasoning domain or legal policy and ethics domain or financial and scientific domain, technical and security expertise you have, especially for finance professionals, many I know have been doing some jobs off and on for data labeling. So this data labeling is of a higher level. Someone from the AI company will contact you, explain how it is to be done, and you share your expertise and the kind of money they pay is reasonably good. Seven examples that I'll give here. Number one, medical doctors and clinical specialists in the area of expertise, medical reasoning, diagnostic accuracy, treatment guidelines, hallucination risk management, Lawyers and legal scholars, huge, huge opportunity there. Software engineers and system architects who may not be AI experts, cyber security experts, financial analysts and economists. Economists are in huge demand because the kind of queries that come up on LLMs require that kind of raw data modeling earlier. Scientists and researchers, the way AI is now being used to do real scientific research is praiseworthy. One of the newest of antibiotics being discovered was courtesy pattern recognition AI. Uh, that's a whole topic. I'll cover it. I request you to keep uh, suggesting topics that you would want to hear from you, from me in the comment thread. Please do keep telling us how you're finding these sessions. All the criticism is welcome. All your praise is definitely welcome. And do leave us a testimonial. The link for that too is given. Policy ethics and governance specialists. The point I'm trying to make here is 
these are opportunities that no one had anticipated earlier and they have all come up so this will not stop over the next 5 years at least till 2030 as ai becomes more and more embedded and there's a lot of criticism of ai which is justified also i have been doing that i have been doing that uh, informed criticism in many of my other videos i hope you checked out the playlist on ai and the future of humanity Rodney Brooks criticism the godfather of robotics who talked about why humanoid robots are not happening not in the next 300 years i have covered that topic also so i try to bring some realism some grounded truth feel to all my videos without being a fanboy or a hype master for ai so it is actually truthful to say that over the next 5 to 6 years ai will create ample opportunities for domain experts so go ahead check it out and maybe something really good lies in store for you and of course if you join our courses maybe you will become the next ai expert very soon so this was our session today on ai and jobs thank you so much we are raising billion hopes slowly and steadily all your suggestions are welcome this is mentor sandy bringing you ai for real impact